Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the first Pitsman. This watch is available from Pitsman.com for 845 US dollars, which is 800 euro. Pitsman are a micro brand. They were founded in 2021 and they're based in Seoul in Korea. So firstly, let's look at the leather travel case that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the specifications of the piece. So the watch comes in this black leather travel case, very aesthetically pleasing and good attention to detail because if you look at the buckle and tang on the strap to the flap, you can see it's signed to a good standard with the Pitsman emblem. So let's have a look inside. Nice velour fabric which is black, very aesthetically pleasing to the interior and also there's this suede leather cushion which is padded and this sits beneath the case back and also the buckle and tang so that the buckle and tang doesn't rub against the case back and scuff and scratch it so good attention to detail to have the padded pillow cushion it's got a lovely scent to the genuine leather travel roll and I'm pleased to see Pitsman use this as a credible alternative to a plastic or cardboard watch box and also it's good to see genuine leather used rather than the cost-cutting measure of using PU leather. So, very aesthetically pleasing. It's got one keeper on the strap, as you can see. Flawless stitching throughout. So, lovely grained finish to it with the matte black leather. So, with a watch, one also gets this warranty card, and it's filled in with the date of purchase and also the serial number of the piece. All Pitsman watches are engraved with a unique serial number, and I'm pleased to report all Pitsman watches are covered by a two-year international warranty, which is very good. Now, bear in mind, this is a micro brand, so it's a mid-tier piece costing €800. Euro. Normally, one would expect a 12-month international warranty. To get two years of international warranty is excellent. So, with regards to the dimensions, we have a 39mm case diameter. We have a lug-to-lug -lug measurement of 47mm, a thickness of 12mm, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. The genuine leather strap, which is tan colored, tapers from 20 millimeters at the lugs down to the buckle and tang. Solid 316L grade stainless steel buckle, as you can see, and it's engraved with high definition engraving with the Pitsman emblem. No sharp edges, no burrs, and flawless mirror polishing to the flanks. So very well finished. This is the kind of finishing to a buckle and tang one would expect with a high tier piece and it's a credit to Pitsman because the quality control and the finishing of their buckle and tangs is exceptional. No sharp corners to it and it's beautifully deburred and every facet of the buckle is mirror polished to a flawless finish as is the head of the piece. So double dome sapphire crystal with clear AR coating on the underside and it's a boxed top hat style as you can see so flat top to it but it has the boxed profile to the edges of the crystal and the clear AR coating does an excellent job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the white enamel dial which has a glossy finish to it. 70 grams on this genuine leather strap so it is a very lightweight piece for, for a 39 millimeter and therefore it will be comfortable to wear for long periods of time such as 8 to 12 hours per day. Strong specification because we have 100 meters and bear in mind it has a push-pull crown. With a daily wear piece, one would expect 50 meters of water resistance. It's unnecessary to have 100, it's excessive, but it's very strong specification. And again, Pitsman deserve credit because they could have cut production costs by simply using a push-pull crown with 50 meters of hermetic seal. This has 100 meters. The crown is coin edge finished nice chamfer to it so no sharp edges to it but it, it does feel correctly proportioned it's grippy and tactile mirror polished cap to it as you can see and again engraved with high definition engraving with a Pitsman brand emblem so very aesthetically pleasing and I like the proportions of it often it's a case with daily wear pieces from micro brands that the crown is too large they make the crown look like a dive watch crown and it's oversized for the 39 millimeter head of the piece but this crown is correctly proportioned but it's large enough to be able to get purchase on it with one's index finger and thumb in order to pull it out manually wind it and set the time my favourite aspect of this piece is the white enamel dial, which is just absolutely gorgeous. The tone of the white has a very nice glossy finish to it. The other thing I really like about it, and I want to give due credit to Pittsman for this because they are a mid-tier brand, 
is the quality of the printing to the dial. The rail track chaptering is high definition. It's not blurry, it's defined and it's absolutely crisp. The quality of the black paint printing on this white enamel dial is the kind of quality one would expect to see on a high tier piece costing in excess of 5,000 euro. One has to bear in mind this is 800 euro, it's a mid tier piece, but that is the level of printing we're looking at. The Breguet numerals are also high definition. They're not blurry, they are very sharp. And I really like that sharpness of the quality of the printing. The other thing that's interesting is the Breguet numerals, which are printed on the enamel, they're not flat. They're actually three-dimensional. And when you tilt the piece in the light, you can actually see they have a glossy look to the black paint. It's not matte black and they're not flat. It's actually glossy, so it looks like wet paint. And it's very nice because the 3D effect of the Breguet numerals catches the light, the legibility is good, the symmetry of the dial is good. They've also made the correct decision because they've cited the subdial at 6 o'clock and often brands make the mistake of they put an Arabic numeral, they put a 6 numeral at 6 o'clock and they chop it off because the subdial obscures it and so you just have the lower portion of the 6 Arabic numeral but they've deleted it and it's the right thing to do because there's no need with a rail track chaptering one can clearly see where six o'clock is on the dial we have a black marker for six and there's no point in having half a six or a third of a six it's better just to delete it and have the full sub dial beautiful printing to the sub dial the arabic numerals are clearly legible as is the rail track uh, ring around the sub dial so it matches the 60 minute chapter ring and i think the design the legibility and also the symmetry of the dial is excellent Another detail I really like, and it's something that I want to give due credit to Pittsman for again, are the Dolphin hands. The mirror polishing to the Dolphin hands is exceptional for a mid-tier piece. This is the kind of finishing to hands one would expect to see on a Grand Seiko piece, costing in excess of €3,000. The mirror polishing is good to the blued hands. The Dolphin hands are correctly proportioned. If you look at the minute hand, you can see it extends all the way to the minute ticks on the rail track chaptering. That is correct. If you look at the proportion of the hour hand, you can see the tip of the dolphin hand extends all the way to the Breguet numerals. That is the correct length of the hour and the minute hand, respectively. They've even got the proportion of the second hand on the six o'clock subdial correct, because again, the, the tip of the second hand extends to the minute, the second ticks on the subdial. So I really like the look of the Dolphin hands because they have a metallic shiny finish. Now I want to clarify, often brands will cut production costs because with blued hands they electroplate the hands to make them look blue or alternatively they simply paint them with metallic blue paint. And that's not the correct way of doing it. These are heat treated. So they heat treat the metal and that gives it the blue finish. Now it's very difficult to get consistent color tone when bluing hands because you have to get the flame precise on the hands to get an even heating because otherwise if you heat them too much or too little the blue isn't even it fades lighter or darker on the hands but if you look at the hour and minute hand you can see the metallic blue finish is perfectly matched on the hour and minute hand all the way across the hands are the same tone and that's actually very difficult to get consistent on every single hand because there is a slight variation in temperature and there is a slight variation of how close the flame is and therefore what the temperature is touching the hands when they blued, uh, when they blew them. So very difficult process. And the other thing is when producing hands, high tier brands have a very high uh, rejection rate. They only accept 10% of the hands made, they reject 90%. And of course, this increases production costs because they scrap 90% of the hands made in a batch. They only take the top 10%. And I can tell you that is the rejection rate that Pittsman are using on their blued hands. They, are, they have a 10% acceptance rate. They reject 90% because unless the hands are mirror polished to a flawless finish, and unless they are blued with heat treatment to a flawless finish, they are rejected. So what you're looking at here are the top 10% in the batch. So they are absolutely 10 out of 10 perfect. Just gorgeous. So printing on the dial is exceptional. Enamel finishing to the dial is exceptional. And also the quality of the blued hands, which are dwarfing hands, is 
Superb. Let's test the push pull crown execution. So as I've detailed, solid 316L grade stainless steel, coin edge finished. And as it's a push pull crown, the benefit of that is you don't need to pull out the crown in order to manually wind the movements, which is the Salita Caliber SW261-1 automatic. So let's test manually winding it to its maximum 38 hour power reserve. Nice firm resistance to it. One can feel the tension in the main spring gradually building up to its maximum 38 hours. It feels smooth, similar to winding a SW200-1 automatic, which you may be familiar with. The SW261 has a similar architecture, but the main difference is the second hand on the SW261 is not mounted on the cannon pinion in the center of the dial. It's mounted on the six o'clock sub dial, as you can see. But the architecture of the 261 is similar to the 200-1. It is an automatic which is manually wound and also wound by the rotor automatically. So it feels very good. One can feel the tension build up. It does feel like a good, solid, reliable movement. Pulling out the push pull crown hacks the movement. If you look at the second hand on the six o'clock sub dial, you can see it's now stopped dead. So it's possible to hack the movement and set the time precisely to the second. Let's check how the time setting is. Nice firm resistance to the gearing. It actually feels slightly firmer than the SW200-1, which you may be familiar with, but I like that firmness. One can feel the medium resistance in the gearing. It feels solid. There's no play in the gearing whatsoever, no back play. I really like it when you rotate a crown clockwise and anticlockwise, and there's an immediate response to the minute and hour hands. They move without any back play in the gearing. It feels tight. There's no back play. The gears mesh correctly. I'm just going to cycle it through 12 hours because I want to feel what the resistance is like all the way through the 12 hours to feel the gearing. Feels very good, nice and solid. So one can feel the friction of the gearing, but they feel tight. They mesh very well. So it feels like a very well-made movement. And of course the Salita, like all Salita movements, the SW261-1 is Swiss made, so it's a high grade of movement. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that reinstates the 100 meters of hermetic seal. And you can see the uh, second hand on the six o'clock sub dial begins to sweep around again. So absolute pleasure to use the crown, correctly proportioned. It's grippy with a coin edge finishing, but no sharp edges, no burst to it. It's got a nice chamfer to it. The bezel is mirror polished to a flawless finish. Nice groove in it, which adds interest. And I like the way the double domed sapphire crystal with clear, clear AR coating projects above the mirror polished bezel. Nice profile to the bezel and I like the groove in it. It gives it a vintage aesthetic. I want to give credit again to Pittsman because every facet to the head of the piece is mirror polished to exceptional standards. This is the kind of mirror polishing one would expect to see on a Grand Seiko piece which has Zerat suitcase polishing which is very high standard. And it's just absolutely perfect. There are no flaws in it whatsoever. Nice undercuts to the flanks, nice curved profile to the lugs. Even the tips of the lugs are correctly deburred. There's no sharp points, no sharp corners. And every single facet is perfectly polished. Now, when I look at a polished case, the first area I look at is in between the lugs. The reason why is with mid-tier brands, Often they will cut production costs because in between the lugs is an area that they don't finish or if they do mirror polish it rather than leaving it brass satin finish, it's not done to the same high standard as the bezel, the case back, the crown and the flanks because in between the lugs isn't as visible so they can get away with leaving it brass satin finish and the majority of collectors don't have an issue with that. But when it's mirror polished, it's expensive to do in between the lugs. It adds to production costs. And with a micro brand, that means it eats into their profit margin per piece because they're producing a low volume of watches per annum versus larger brands which are producing high batch production volumes. So it's expensive to polish in between the lugs. It adds to the production time and the production costs. I can tell you that Pittsman are not cutting corners. The mirror polishing in between the lugs is, is the same high quality finishing as the flanks, the mirror polished case back, the bezel and the crown is absolutely flawless. And it's just beautiful. The internals of the lugs 
is done to the same standard as the top of the lugs and also the undercuts of the case. So they've done a really good job and they deserve credit because this is Zeratsu case polishing level. That's the kind of quality we're looking at. So tan leather strap, it's also available with an alligator leather strap, which is black if this grain finish isn't your personal taste. I like this tan strap. Contrasting white stitching is done to a good standard around the perimeter. Plenty of holes in the strap to allow for fine tuning of the length. This will fit between a six and a maximum eight inch wrist, as I'll show you. They've made the correct decision by using quick release spring bars, and that negates the need for a spring bar tool if you want to exchange the strap. It's also available on a stainless steel bracelet if the tan leather strap or the alligator black leather strap isn't your personal taste. So I'm pleased to see quick release spring bars used. Now, on the underside of the strap, they use a different type of leather. This leather is Spanish Marty leather, and I can tell you, Spanish Marty leather is very high grade. It's very soft and supple. It's perfectly smooth. And what that means is when this Spanish Marty leather is against your wrist for long periods of time, it's incredibly soft and comfortable because it makes the undersides of the strap flexible. And it feels very, very smooth and very comfortable to wear. So this is a comfortable piece to wear for long periods of time. And it's good that they didn't use the grained leather finish which would be less comfortable on the top side, they've used this smooth Marty leather on the underside. So as you can see, it's embossed with Pittsman and Sole, and the strap is stitched around the perimeter to a very high standard. Two keepers, one's fixed and one slides, as one would expect, and the finishing to the buckle and tang is outstanding, as I've detailed. Mirror polished on the underside and the flanks to the same quality as the top side, which is visible. So no cost cutting measures whatsoever. Let's look at the screw down, uh, screw down stainless steel case back. Now mirror polishing on this, needless to say, absolutely flawless. The quality of the engraving is high definition. We have the specification engraved around the circumference with the serial number. And in the center we have Pittsman and the brand emblem. Mirror polishing is some of the best I've seen. This really is like Zeratsu case polishing used by Grand Seiko. It is absolutely flawless mirror finishing to the solid 316L grade stainless steel case back. The milled slots don't have any sharp edges, no burrs, so it doesn't scratch the wrist and irritate. Perfectly flat. Just look at the profile of the case back. It's not a bubble back case back. This piece is only 12 millimeters thick. Now bear in mind, it's not a quartz piece and it's not a manual wind movement. It's an automatic. The Salita Caliber SW261-1 has a rotor. So it has 100 meters, but it doesn't have a, a bubble back case back in order to clear the rotor. And it does have a box top hat style crystal. So it's an incredibly low profile piece, 12 millimeters with a flat case back but it's not 50 meters, it's 100 meters. So they deserve credit because they've done a very good job of finishing the case back and they've also made it very flat. It still has enough clearance to clear the rotor on the movement, so an excellent job. Right, so I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits in my eight inch wrist. Now, as I've detailed, this strap will fit a six to eight inch wrist. Eight is the absolute maximum, I can just engage the end of the strap into the two keepers. So this really is the upper limit, eight inches. For comfort, I would like it to be an extra half inch long for my large eight inch wrist, but for the majority of collectors with a six to seven and a half inch wrist, this tan leather strap and also the alligator leather strap, which is black, it's the same length, will fit you. Nice mirror polishing to the buckle and tang, correctly proportioned, it's nice and slender and I like the curved profile. Contrasting white stitching complements the glossy enamel dial, as you can see. So at 12 millimeters, it will easily slip underneath a shirt cuff if you wear business shirts. Nice curved profile to the lugs, as you can see. 47 is close to perfection. I regard 48 to be the sweet spot. That is the perfect lug to lug measurement, regardless of whether you have a six to seven inch wrist or a seven to eight inch wrist respectively. At 47 lug to lug, it is close to the 48 millimeter perfect lug to lug. For six to seven inch wrist, 47 will be the perfect lug to lug measurement. Nice mirror polishing to the tips of the lugs. I love the curved profile and I like the bevels on the edge, which mark the transition between the flanks and the tops of the lugs. The groove cut in the mirror polished bezel 
It's just absolutely gorgeous. And I like the way the double dome sapphire crystal projects above the bezel with a nice curved edge to it. The blued hands catch the light and they contrast very well with the black uh, breguet numerals and also the enamel dial. So the legibility is good, the symmetry is good, and the proportions of the handsets are just fantastic. I love the way the blue, uh, the blued hands catch the lights. In low light conditions, they look black, but then they change to like an electric blue in bright light. You see the way they catch the light. There they look electric blue, but when you tilt the piece in low light conditions, they change to looking black like the uh, glossy Breguet numerals, which have a, a 3D effect to them. So it's just a very interesting piece, but the enamel really does look beautiful. It looks like a vintage piece. So I love the aesthetic of it. It's the perfect daily wear piece, 39 millimeters and 47 millimeters lug to lug. Also 20 millimeter lug width is the perfect lug width for a 39 millimeter. They've got the taper on the strap correct. So the proportions are outstanding. Nice curved undercut to the case and it's a nice snug fit to the wrist without a large gap because it has that flat stainless steel case back. So there's no loom on the dial or the hand, so we don't need to do a loom test. So let's discuss the movement use because it's one of my favorite aspects of the piece. So this uses the Solita Caliber SW261-1 automatic. It has 31 joules. It runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of four hertz. As I've detailed in my previous reviews, I really like 4 hertz movements because it gives a characteristic smooth sweep to the second hand. If you look at the 6 o'clock subdial, you can see the second hand sweeps around with a characteristic smooth 4 hertz sweep. I dislike 3 hertz movements used by Seiko, such as the NH35A, which runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour, because 3 hertz movements have a stutter or judder to the second hand. They don't sweep as smoothly as 4 hertz. So I like that this runs at 28,800 and a frequency of 4 hertz. We have that nice smooth sweep. 38 hour power reserve is perfectly acceptable. Now the stated accuracy of the standard grade of SW261-1 is plus or minus 12 seconds per day to plus or minus 30 seconds per day. So a rather wide accuracy range. The standard grade is regulated in two positions rather than five positions as per the top grade and chronometer grade of Salita calibers. So I'm pleased to report that Pittsman are doing an excellent job because they're very well regulating the Salita movements they're using. This one is running consistently at plus five seconds per day, which is excellent accuracy for an SW261-1. Plus five is well within the stated plus or minus 12 to plus or minus 30 seconds per day. So credit where credit's due, Pittsman are regulating their movements to plus five outstanding accuracy. The SW261-1 is a reliable, well-proven Swiss caliber. No issues whatsoever with regards to the durability or the reliability long term. The manual winding works correctly, the hacking, the automatic winding. So no problems with it whatsoever. It's very similar in the architecture to the SW200-1, but it has 31 joules, so it's actually a higher grade of Salita caliber. I prefer the 261 to the 200. It's just a better build quality to it, and I like the higher number of joules, 31 joules. So no, neg no negatives to it whatsoever, and I like the 6 o'clock subdial. It adds interest to the dial and retains the symmetry of the Breguet numerals because we don't have a cutoff six Arabic numeral. The Breguet numeral is deleted from six, which is correct. So good quality Swiss movement from Salita. And are there any negatives to this piece? None whatsoever. This is the perfect daily wear piece. The proportions are excellent. The specification is strong. We've got 100 meters rather than 50 meters, which would have sufficed. The quality of the finishing is Grand Seiko Zeratsu level polishing. It's absolutely flawless. Even in between the lugs is perfection. Quality of the tan leather strap is excellent because we also have the Spanish Marty leather underneath, which is top grade. Buckle and tang is also highly finished. There are no flaws to this whatsoever. The handset is high tier level in terms of the blued hands, which are dolphin hands, the proportions, and also the mirror polishing prior to it being heat treated. The hands are exceptional. The enamel dial is exceptional. 
The 3D effects are the Breguet numerals, the printing, the high definition printing of the rail track chaptering. It's just superlative after superlative. Everything about this watch is done to the highest standard. A 10% rejection rate on the hands is just unheard of in the mid tier at this price point of 845 US dollars. Pearsman deserve credit because they have not cut any corners whatsoever with regards to production costs. The quality control of this is high tier level. When you get a 10% rejection rate on components like the handsets, that tells you the quality control is the highest. So I'm going to declare it excellent quality, but I'm going to say it's good value. Now, why do I say good value? Why don't I say excellent? Well, this is a very competitive piece at a very competitive price point, but it does face some stiff opposition, some, some stiff rival pieces at this price point between 800 and 900 euro. Micro brands are producing high grade pieces at this price point. In order to make this excellent value, I would like to see Pittsman reduce the price slightly below 800 euro. And therefore that would make it excellent value. I think at the moment it's good value at 800. I appreciate it's difficult to cut production costs without sacrificing quality control. This clearly has very high quality control, but in order to make it excellent value, it really needs to be lower than 800 euro. If this was between 700 and 800 euro, then of course it goes without saying it would be classed as excellent quality and excellent value. But so I'm going to highly recommend it to you. I think it's an outstanding daily wear piece with no negatives whatsoever. So I hope you've enjoyed my review of the first Pittsman. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you for watching.